I want to talk about women and body stand body issues, body image, beauty standards around women in sports. I think that there's a lot going on with women in sports. There's a lot. We could go in a lot of places. Um, but what are your guys' thoughts on the standards around being good at your sport, but also being beautiful? I think that there are some crazy standards on women these days. Because I feel like when it comes to men, like I'm thinking of just some guys that play in the NBA, the fact that he's there is enough. And granted, I know this is about retired college athletes, mm -hmm. so let's just go to college. Yeah, the fact that he's there is enough. Like he's on the team. No one's really checking for him in general. Like it's like, okay, you're talented. But I think as a female athlete, no matter what sport you play, but specifically basketball, she's there. Is she good? Is she pretty? I feel like that's a, like one of the first things that comes yeah. to mind. And I, I, I find it to be quite unacceptable. I'm not here to tell anybody how to, you know, get ready for games, dress, all that stuff. But I remember that when I was in the locker room, specifically at Virginia, it was, this is like, I went to Virginia 2013 was my first season with them into 2014. That was my freshman year. And as we're prepping for games, it's like, all right, scout, like get dressed. And then like half the team is at the mirror. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, I'm putting on makeup. I'm like, well, we're about to go sweat. Right. So <laughs> what are, what are yeah. we doing? Like, did you guys encounter any of that during your time in college athletics? <laughs> I mean, not a part of the pre-game routine by any means, but my teammates definitely, you know, have a little mascara on, a little, not, not quite my vibe or anything, but even watching the college games now, oh. I mean, I the mean, eyelashes <laughs> on, you know, the, the pony yeah. is sleek, like it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. and I'm like, okay, you're like, yeah, I get it, you're on ESPN2 today, so like, <laughs> you know, moms that don't watch it, like, you know, you want it together, but you know, what I hope is that they're doing it for themselves and not right. for the cameras or for people. Um, it's but, hard to know. But and it, it is very difficult. It, and my thing is, like, yeah. who am I to sit here and, like, at, you know, be asking the questions? But here I am sitting here asking the questions. Okay. If you want, you know, if you want, have, want, want to ask different questions, get your own show. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but, like, seriously, yeah. I think this is my theory. I would love to get your guys' <laughs> thoughts on it. So leading up, like, we all, for the most part, you guys are a little older, you're a little bit younger, but like, for the most part, we grew up watching the same people coming into college. So mm -hmm. Candace Parker was a big deal coming out of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I thought she was also very pretty, you know, very yeah. beautiful um, and was a great athlete. So I'm like, oh, so much to aspire to. This is like my 12 year old self mm -hmm. being like, yeah. yes, like Candace. All right. Right before I go into college, Skylar Diggins is having her, yeah. her moment yeah. and she's a senior before I get into college. So she like I played Notre Dame my freshman year and she was not there so she had just graduated and I think she was the turning point for women's college basketball mm, yeah and because I feel it like, beautiful I mean beautiful like mm -hmm. but also such a great athlete and I just remember having conversations with um like my male friends uh male athletes and I'm like oh who are you cheering for tonight They're like I'm cheering for Skylar and I'm like well do you know she's on a whole team like called Notre Dame you should probably be cheering for them like uh, she's not on the you know box score and so I just felt like she changed a lot and I don't think it was necessarily negative, but I think the way that the media took it just ruined it for women's sports. Well, it was a reflection of society, right? Like, they're like, oh, well, we gravitate toward this. This is a very marketable mm -hmm. thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. she's very feminine. Like, she was always full well put together. And yep. so it helps market to a male audience or a more mass audience. So yeah. I don't know. I, and I know that you're not saying it was Skylar who did it. Like, right. it was us as fans of the game, right? right. Like, like push it toward that. Um, but I do see that as definitely a very pivotal time that kind of has led us to the things I was talking about before with the, the lashes. lashes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's the yeah. lashes. I don't know. Yeah. It's the lashes that stand out to me so much. I mean, like, yeah. so thick. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's what you're talking about. Like, it's, it's enough for a male to be just very good at what they do, and they automatically earn respect. I think females you do have to be good at what you do to get to a certain level. But then also if you're pretty and you're good at yeah. what you do, then it is easier for our world to market you um, because that's what our world wants. And, and that's a, that's a tough standard. Um, you know? Yeah. I think um, like something that I find to be that like continues to egg this on is like, Pages like beautiful ballers. Nothing against the page. Like, yeah. do what you do, yeah. you know? But I just think it's like, it takes, I just know girls who, and even like while I was an athlete, 
girls who just wanted more than anything to be on the page. Like it had nothing to do with skill. Or the some one of the girls like, you know, maybe making it on the page and I'm like, she literally is not good. Like mm -hmm. she just she right. she wears a uniform. Yeah. Like she yeah. just yeah, literally she wears a uniform. Yeah. Like and when it comes down to like actual but, skill. But can't she ball? <laughs> I mean, it's supposed like these to. These tiny schools. <laughs> yeah. Are on, it's yeah. like, I've never even heard of right. this yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's also like women like to look like they have it all together and they want to mm -hmm. feel like desired. And I think that like if you are athletic and if you can play a sport very well, like at the division one level and you can be pretty like. It's just that image of, like, you have it all together. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's always... It, like, feeds your confidence that you might be lacking if you, like, look presentable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they're... Like, people just look good, play good. Like, they would put on yeah. makeup because right. in their confidence, like, they would just feel good and then they would play better. You yeah. know? But, I mean, that's, that's not, like, what you should put your confidence in. Right. I just think that, you know, girls just like to look like they have it together and mm -hmm. like they have it all and yeah. you know i think sometimes it can just be and i think we're all kind of saying the same things mm -hmm. it just can be kind of predatory like yeah when it's like you're doing this and then like you're getting validation from these outside sources mm -hmm. and i think like what people don't see even though it's talked about vaguely like social media is causing all these issues yeah yada, yada, <laughs> let's blame it on the you know on that but at the end of the day like these girls are putting a lot of their worth in that and maybe some of them aren't and like that's awesome if you're if they're not but I feel like more times than not um because I have had teammates like that that were just honestly gorgeous and could play but like it was always she's a pretty baller and not like a girl who can play who just is also pretty you know right. um and also like that that was something to be sh to strive for as right. if like pretty is a goal as if it's not something that is like placed out there that is unattainable for some because like society like what society calls pretty is not what everyone would deem as pretty i think there's just like these larger conversations that this is bringing up that aren't good um mm -hmm. that people aren't really calling out things but i think you talked about and i had kind of hit on like how it's easier for the media to sell it it kind of gets uh, like male viewers interested yeah. in things like yeah. that but like what are your thoughts on like women and pay for play and things like that like so these guys are interested but at the same time they're the same ones that are like oh i'm watching her because she's pretty not because she could play and, and and that game gets views not the larger thing like we're talking about women's basketball like that the WNBA not really being paid very much mm -hmm. and there are some le like legitimate reasons why in terms of just like revenue but like support it doesn't cost any money to support to turn on the tv and watch the game right. you know and so yeah. but if we're talking about beauty standards and that's why they're watching it's like how who's responsible in my opinion like who like where who could be go to and be like this needs to change you know for me my my immediate thought is I mean, again, the marketing aspect of it. Um, I think even through this pandemic, the women of the WBA mm -hmm. were able to take their branding into their own hands using their social media. Um, and again, like, I, I don't want it to sound like, you know, the whole like wearing makeup thing is, you know, um, a bad thing or whatever. Right. Yeah. Do right? what you do. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. right, like, just don't let that be the thing. Like, you're, you're here to put your work as an athlete out on the table. Let that be like a bonus or something that you enjoy on the, you know, to do on, on the side and that you're not doing for everybody else. Um, but like, let the product speak for itself. And I feel like the WNBA did that this year. Like mm -hmm. it, it was about the, the product. Um, and everything else can be, you know, marketed around that. Um, I think now beauty standards in terms of professional athletes are not strictly like, Oh, like she's cutesy next door, mm -hmm. all American girl. <laughs> you know, I think we're moving away from that. Um, you know, it's the reason why the U.S. women's soccer team is more popular than the very dominant U.S. women's basketball For sure. national team, right? Like mm -hmm. decades of success. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a reason, you know, that we have to look at ourselves, like as a society, why that, why that, um, the why there is that uh, difference, but. I think at the end of the day, like very, very much so about how we're marketing those athletes. And so it is going to take some of these prominent people to say like, no, I'm not going to be that mold that everybody wants. Right. right. Like 
being a, a diverse or um, not typical, right, mm -hmm. of what the mass wants, mm -hmm. but just marketing what is real. Like, yeah. what what is this league? What what are these girls? These schools too. Again, the school, your university goes and puts the kid who looks looks the best yep. on the poster for sure. Very true. The one that is going to sell the tickets, mm -hmm. you know, and like schools have to move away from that. You know, put the kid who um, probably, you know, didn't grow up in the neighborhood that you thought, you know, or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that breeds success or something. Like, the kid with the dreads, like, put her on the right. poster. Right. Like, they have to be willing to do that, too. So, there's work for everybody to do on a personal and, yeah. you know, institutional level. But, I mean, it just, again, it, it reflects just all the awful parts of who we all are. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Let's transition into talking about, like, body image. I think... The beauty side of it we're kind of all on the same page and i think that's just a large discussion and we'll always be kind of be talking about it yeah. <laughs> it's always as women be, always always yeah. every yeah. single time um but i feel like body image is something that will i mean i feel like it not that beauty standards don't hit everybody but i feel like body image in general hits everybody mm -hmm. no matter if you're a professional athlete um a college athlete one that doesn't play one that does play i think when you come into college your body is at a certain way it's a certain way it's kind of been that way for a lot of your life you get to college you may start lifting you're definitely lifting and so things are changing like I know I've heard girls go from like I was so small and lean and now I'm putting on muscle and I don't like it mm -hmm. or um I've never I mean I haven't really heard too many people say like oh I've lost a lot of weight and I don't like it but like you <laughs> right <laughs> like you're, you're running a lot yeah. so maybe you yeah, are like yeah. losing pounds or whatever yeah. but like your body like, tiny like people who are particularly small usually like I mean they're not looking to drop weight they might be like right. I'm not able to hold my weight at yeah. practice yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're like you didn't want to <laughs> right. yeah. you beat up like yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, that's For a sure. huge thing because it's like I think what I'm getting at is you go in things are changing you go mm -hmm. see a nutritionist if mm -hmm. you have that and you have different goals. I know, like, I did have teammates that were like you, and it was like, we'd go into the weight room, they'd weigh themselves because they needed to be a certain, like, not a certain weight, they just needed to be, like, we couldn't let, we didn't want them to get too light because it's like, they were, they were doing so much cardio, yep. their, their body types would just, they just get lighter and lighter and lighter. And at some point, you're literally, you might break <laughs> if someone hits you. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, so, there's a jump ball, and it's like, there goes Cassidy. Like, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, um, but I do think sometimes it can get dangerous. I was a person who I came in at a good weight, was running, like, we was fine in terms of conditioning. And they had goals for me. They were yeah. like, girl, we're going to put some muscle on you. Uh -huh. Little did I know. It was going to be muscle, fat, everything. It was going to be everything. <laughs> yeah. And then I was going to be like, okay, now I need you to lose. And I'm like, my, I'm so sorry. My body doesn't really do this. Uh -huh. Change your thing. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Can, we get, can we figure this out, please? And so I spent a lot of my time in college just being so self-conscious. I'm like, I'm changing. I don't, I don't really mm. like it. And learning how to get comfortable with that. Did you guys experience anything like that? Or am I just like kind of... No, myself? yeah. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah, we had like after lifting, you were either part... You were in three different groups. Mm, talk about them. <laughs> and we had like, you're a, you're a mass girl. So you drink, drink a different protein shake after you're like, a, you know, stay... You need to stay your... Maintain. I think it was mass, maintain, or lose. Whew. And you you got a different shake based on that after every lift. And so we, we definitely knew each other. You know, we knew how much we weighed down to the pound. We weighed, we tried to, I think we only weighed once a week. I don't know. Um, but for some of my teammates that were either told to do one or the other, like told, Hey, if you lose like 10, 15 pounds, you might be a way better basketball player. That that's a tough thing to be told. And we, we definitely had some eating issues develop because of standards that were put on us and lifelong eating issues. I mean, yeah. I have teammates that still struggle with it big time yeah. um, because they, you know, everyone wants her. Like for me, I wanted, if I would, if I was at my playing weight for the rest of my life, I would be fine with that. Um, but some people definitely would not want to, or would want to be bigger or smaller based on kind of what they were told. But yeah, yeah. it, it was not good. in high school tell me that. Um, if you would yeah, lose if weight. You would, if you probably drop 10 pounds, like you get more looks. Because at that time, you know, I was struggling to, like, where was my next sure. step? Um, thankfully, I just didn't care that he said that. You know? <laughs> that, that he said that? Yikes. Uh, hey, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, like, yeah. They don't coach at my mm -hmm. high school, actually. Um, well, he was kind of weird. He, 
Yeah. <laughs> and he was not someone who I valued his opinion. Sure. Um, yeah. So there was that. Luckily. But, yeah, no, yeah. truthfully. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, being a product of a D2 school, we did not do, um, you know, yeah. the meals after or the, the protein um, training tables, which yeah. Yeah. you call know, it. Yeah. Did not, things. you know, <laughs> my sister played at Purdue. I know a little bit about that. That <laughs> <laughs> DUI life. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but, but my sophomore year, um, there were, so I per performed well my freshman year on the basketball court. And, of course, I put on the pounds and the cap. Okay, I, I definitely did that. But then the sophomore year came back, and it was not a challenge about weight necessarily, but I, I remember the men's coach, he challenged me, like, you don't want to go into a sophomore slump. Like, what are you doing to make yourself better? Mm -hmm. um, and it didn't directly like you know, relate to that necessarily, but when they presented that maybe we change our diet, um, our trainer – um, the paleo diet is what yeah. he presented to us, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh. And to do it for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And I'm the type of person, like, for 30 days, I pretty much can execute anything. Mm -hmm. Like, we all know who knows, but, like, the 30 days. So, like, I committed to do it with several of my teammates. Well, it ended up being, you know, two of us who <laughs> kept to it, and I was the only one who never had cheat days. But my body, like, drastically changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going through preseason, so, you know, you, I naturally had some, like, harder days where it was, like, I had to take steps backwards mm -hmm. to go forward. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, struggling to get through my morning workout, but seeing results, you know, a couple weeks later. Um, but it totally changed my body, and, and it showed me so much about nutrition, like, yep. that I was able to apply that after. Like, I, I wouldn't say I had, a, like, a, an unhealthy relationship with food before, but, like, I grew up, uh, I feel like, one, like, many black households, like, I was just, like, uh, like things that were preservatives, uh, whatever. Who, I, this is easy access. Mm -hmm. My mom, like we would stop at McDonald's, like in between games, like mm -hmm. it was just like very normal. Um, but then when I got to school and I did this, I was like, mm, that was not normal. And that was not okay that I was eating McDonald's like an hour for my game. Like <laughs> that's not fuel. Like there's nothing okay yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, to this day, I've like since college, I've not touched McDonald's because it actually makes me sick. But, Gross. like, it, it showed me so much. Mm -hmm. It showed me so much about how to eat and how to fuel my body. Um, I put the weight back on, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. Eventually. I mean, eventually. But, yeah. like, that sophomore camp, like, my sophomore campaign, like, being at that lower weight definitely, it helped me. Um, and I, I'm someone who fluctuates. Like, so when you say your body doesn't deal well with changes, like, I'm somebody, like, I'm going to watch this video when this comes out. I'm going to be like, Oh girl, I'm either up five pounds or I'm down five pounds. Like I'm that person. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it fluctuates, but I'm like in like this post athlete era. I'm trying to like figure out what is the ideal weight, not ideal weight, the ideal like set of circumstances, mm -hmm. like for for my body to be at its yeah. best. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I I mean I'm someone who really just had I didn't I don't think I had a great relationship with food going into college I, and I got a nutritionist actually going into college because I was okay. like I, I'm focused like I really want to be a certain you know yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I mean you guys don't know my life uh, she's like I got a nutritionist and a psychologist before college <laughs> I didn't I did not get a I know you man. waited too long you on that one <laughs> um but yeah so got a nutritionist and to be honest it got me to the, like a weight I want. It got me. I was really low. I was like a little skinny thing, like running around. Like, yeah. I was. I was so quick. I was like, here we go. <laughs> um, but it got me to like a good weight. But it didn't really help me with my relationship with food. So it yeah. just kind of got me to where I needed to go, uh, which in my mind was fine. And then I got to college, and I even my relationship with food got even worse because it it was the terminology around it. It was kind of like. Will a half a carb work for you for the day? And I'm like, a half a carb? What is that like? Yeah. A half a cup of rice for the whole day? Like, that's the only carbs I get? Like, I'm kind of confused. And so that was horrible. And so even just now, like, I'm starting to get a better relationship with food. I have a dietitian that I love a lot and has helped me kind of think through the way I view food. But it's been different as I've transitioned out of sport. Yeah. I think... Oh, and I, I, I love telling the story because it's tragic, but coming out of, <laughs> like, it's so tragic, but coming out of college at Kansas, I was probably the fittest I've ever been. Like we were a basketball team, but like a track team, we ran all the time. <laughs> so it was crazy. We ran all the time, but I was also like, that nutritionist helped me so much get to like 
the playing weight that I needed to be at. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a weight that I was happy with and my body was in a good place. And I was like, I'm going to do everything I can to keep this. Like, yeah. this is so important to me. I don't want to be, I don't want to be that like retired college athlete that just like lets herself go, right. you know, right. that like now the pressure to continue to just look the way you have always looked. And so I remember I would wake up early. This is after the season. So not nece- I don't necessarily have access to the facilities anymore, mm-hmm. but I'd go to the student union. I'd work out for an hour and a half and I'd do like cardio and weights and then I'd go to a pure bar class because I'm like, I mean, pure bar is fun. Like, whatever. Let me just get another workout in. And then I'd go to class. And throughout the day, I'm only eating clean, like whatever clean means. You know, just like, to me, that meant like nothing. Like, <laughs> like a salad um, right. or something. <laughs> yeah, air. Okay. air. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And then I'd go to a yoga class at night. Oh, and I'm like, man. I mean, we're just... So four hours out of the day, I'm working out. So I'm trying to like replicate practice. Right. Right. And I continued to like, continue to lose weight. But I also continued to over-exercise. Mm-hmm. And it just turned into a mess to the point where like, I remember I walked into... Um, the, just the basketball offices to say hi to everybody. Mm. I'm already, I mean, I'm off, off the team already, so I'm just saying hi. And the coaches are like, you look amazing. And I'm like, well, thank you. I'm not eating. So <laughs> I gotta, I'm not saying that, yeah, but no. I'm like, thank you. Oh my gosh. Like, let me just continue what I'm doing. Mm. And I ruined my metabolism. Like it took me, I, I remember I had so many blood tests run. My hormones were all over the place because I had done this under eating, over exercising trend that I think a lot of people fall into. Mm-hmm. And just because I wanted to stay the same. And mm-hmm. now I have a much better take on like what things should be. But now I'm above my playing weight. Why? I don't play. You know? Exactly. I don't play anymore. Yeah. Like things have changed. And I think there's this like learning process of becoming more comfortable with your body that is just hard. And yeah. so have you guys like how have you guys gotten through that so far since you guys have been out for a little bit longer? Yeah. I feel like you go through, and I, I don't want to say this is for everybody across the board, but you go through this phase of like, well, I'm done with sports. And so like, you don't care to go run or work out. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it, your circumstance right. was like one extreme. I think so many of my teammates, it was like, why would I want to go run? Like I hated that for four yes. years. Why would I work out? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it took me a while to hit the wall of like, well, girl, you're going to need to get up. Like, <laughs> You know, you, you just completely halt that yeah. that part of your work ethic. And so it took me, I would probably say, like, I would work out here and there, like, I'll go play pickup or something uh-huh. like that. Mm-hmm. And then eventually it was like, okay, well, sis, you're going to have to, like, do maybe, like, four days a week to be able to right. like, <laughs> be, at, be at what, again, and for me, it's like, what is my ideal, mm-hmm. if I work out four times a week, Whatever I weigh at the end of the day, I don't actually care. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's about a way of feeling for feel? me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it took me, I mean, it took me a good year. It took me a good year probably to get into like reasonable habits of yeah. <laughs> putting my body back in motion. Like I literally just like didn't care to work out after that. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had teammates that felt the same way. Keys, like, I mean, I knew a girl, she was like one of the, you know, like full six pack during playing weight. Like just, I think she was born with that. But <laughs> but then afterwards she was like, I'm just not going to work out for a long time because I hate running. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But that was not the case for me. I was, I, I wasn't, I was similar to you and I wanted to work out, but I also... I was a graduate assistant after I played. And so I had a lot of access still to lifting and working out. And I was in practice sometimes. And so I don't even think I felt like I wasn't a player still. I mean, I definitely wasn't. But I was involved so much. And so I, I don't think it really, I really had to like learn how to eat and work out like a normal person until I um, moved like from Boone and left. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting a job, like for me, trying to figure out how to work out and have a full-time job <laughs> was difficult because yeah. in college working out was my job. Like right. school was, you know, we handled that. But, <laughs> but a side thing. Yeah. <laughs> But working out was, I mean, that was a part of my job. Someone told me to do it, you know, two or three times a a day. They told me to work out, and so we just did it. And I also ate like crap in college. I mean, I ate poorly. I I don't even know. I look back now knowing that if I would have eaten, you know, halfway decent, how much better I could have been. I mean, really, me and my teammates, we'd be getting milkshakes and double cheeseburgers in college. Mm. Like... Like, just because I couldn't even keep on weight in college and I wanted to, like, have some muscle and 
But anyways, now, um, I mean, I, I'm more like you. I want to feel good, and I, I mean, I actually don't hate running. <laughs> so Me either. I actually kind of yeah, like it now. <laughs> yeah, and so I'll run a little bit. <laughs> All right. But it, it is a balance because I do think, like, I compare myself to myself sometimes. Yeah, compared um, to your former self. Yeah, and I'm like man, it was so cool when you could do all that. And even just like muscle definition and all that is hard to keep up. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, why is it so hard? Oh yeah, because it's not my job anymore, yeah, you know? Right. And I don't know. I'm married to a strength coach, so it's difficult to sometimes. <laughs> That's a whole nother aspect. I mean, he, he does nothing, like he doesn't do anything with me, but like he lives in a gym and that's just so frustrating in general, you know, because, <laughs> so, yeah, it's his job to make people look good, so. Yeah. yeah. What, about, what about you, Cassie? I, you're, like, a little more fresh out of college, so. <laughs> She's fresh. Yeah, so. <laughs> fresh. Um, for me, body image is just, like, a very, it's, an, it's been, a, like, a really weird journey for me because, like, looking at me, nobody pegs me as a basketball player. Like, I get pegged. Like, if I were to ask a stranger, which mm -hmm. I did one time. <laughs> what do you think I play? Yeah. I was like, what sport do you think I play? And first thing he said was tennis. And then he said cheerleading. Mm -hmm. And I forgot even what he, he said after that because I was so offended. <laughs> but, like, tennis. in high school, I was just so thin, like, unhealthily thin. But it was just, like, genetic. Like, I ate literally everything, and I was just tiny. Like, yeah. my dad is like a bean pole. My mom is tiny. Like, so I was just small <laughs> and I was like, I had a big role on my team. So I was just like going, 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 like dropping weight, whatever. But I desperately wanted to put on weight. Like mm -hmm. ever since I was 13, I had a personal trainer and like before school weights, after school weights, I was in, uh, like a, like the only girl in the strength class in high, in school. high school right and um I was on like these eating plans and I just could not gain weight I just couldn't and I wanted to because I needed that muscle to be able to hold my ground like because I just like I said I'm a leaf in the wind like <laughs> I could put together a highlight reel of times where I've just been body checked like yeah. to whatever so that was like extremely difficult whenever it came to lifting too, because yeah. I hated lifting because I just saw no results. Like, mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how many reps I did not do in college, how many sets I did not do, because I'm like, I'm not going to see results. I'm going to lose weight. Like, it's mm -hmm. there's no point. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, at my peak in college, I was, like, the strongest I'd ever been. I finally, like, kind of, I say put on weight, but it was more I just looked like a little bit beefier version of myself. Yeah. And... I liked it because I felt like I was a better basketball player and that was like what was important to me. But then like whenever I played professionally overseas, um, I played in Ireland and my team didn't have the biggest budget in the world. And so my transportation to get places was a bike and my own two feet. Yep. And uh, yeah. I, um, like they paid for like a little bit of my food, but I had to walk to the grocery store, which was like three miles away. So three miles down, three miles right. back. And so I just, I atrophied like, yeah. like crazy. Yeah. And yeah. I feel, you know, I feel that's another thing with me. I feel bad complaining about that because people are like, you know, I hate you type of thing. Yeah, I hear sure. from my sisters, sure. but like that was hard. Cause it was like, I finally got to the point where I could hold my ground and I felt like confident going against any size player that yeah. I could finish, that I could, you know, be acrobatic and like finish through contact. And I was finally feeling physical and then that was all just like kind of stripped away. Um, and now like I kind of face the whole like, oh, go eat a cheeseburger type of mentality, which is like just as hurtful, yeah. you know, and like trying to look healthy but not I just feel very out of control of my own situation because like my metabolism is just so high like yep. I just and it doesn't I say that because it borderline like doesn't really feel feminine you know like I'm like this yeah you know yeah so again I'm I feel horrible anytime that I like you know talk about it or like complain about it but at the same time like I don't know it's just 
Well, it's difficult you know, when like yeah. society is like, yeah, you want to be skinny, 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 and you're like, well, that's not actually my goal at the end of the day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I can right. say that. Yeah. yeah. But then also like, you know, I desperately try, like I look at girls that, you know, were seniors and they left and then girls will be like, oh my God, have you seen her now? And I'm like, I don't sure. want to be that girl, sure. you know? Yeah. yeah. So now like <laughs> you see on my Instagram, I'm on the Peloton every day yeah. like no days <laughs> off on the peloton the peloton so it's it's so i feel so many different types of way about it yeah like i want to look a certain way but i i don't it's hard to explain. yeah no, i mean i think it's interesting because it's like we literally have people who run the gamut like you couldn't keep weight on in college you couldn't we mm-hmm. didn't have it you know you're up and down yeah. i was like gosh sure. can i please lose if i eat yeah. like yeah. a grain of rice it's over right. oh um, <laughs> But I just think it's interesting, and I think, like, I mean, I think it just goes to show that, like, it's really individual to yeah. people, like, the situation, but also that it's always changing. Like, you're out of sport now and still mm-hmm. dealing with the same thing of, like, trying to keep mm-hmm. weight up and things like that, and so I think it's just a, a, a conversation around, like, just becoming comfortable with the yeah. fact that things are changing, and they always will be. Like, it'll be like this when you have your kid or you oh, don't yeah. or whatever, yeah. so... Um, you know, that's a real fear. That's a real yes. fear, like how your body will check. And I, I think it, again, it's like the way that we have always seen our bodies. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, that mm-hmm. sport is not there. That thing that I always yeah. that maintain this thing, like me as a normal person, like is yeah. no longer longer that. But that uh, I don't I don't know if you want to like quote it or um, source it, but the the tweet you sent to me or, or Instagram that you posted about. Um, like not overexerting to maintain a weight. Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, so what? Like, what is overexerting? Right. Because in sport, like, yeah, you're told to push your limits and you're told to to strive. That was the word that she used, striving, striving for it. And in my mind, I'm like, well, sis, for me to get to the gym four days a week, that is striving. That is <laughs> yes. absolutely yes, that's, too much. You know, yeah. like, right? Can you maintain that? I yeah. I think it's like yeah. if we're striving not overexerting yourself is four times a week overexerting yourself. I mean, and can you maintain that? Yeah. I don't know. I like, mean, I think it's reasonable for me to go for days sure, a week. Sure, sure. Um, but it also, like, that takes extra effort to do right. that right. for me. Right. And yeah. so if, if, my, if my goal and the goal weight that I have and when I know I feel my best is four days, I guess I was just trying to get at what she meant about um, like, is, am I, am I, is that unhealthy for me to want to mm. reach for that? Four four days a week, which I don't think that was her point. Um, I yeah. think it was just semantics, but yeah, um, it was just an interesting thought that kind of crossed my mind. Like, okay, should I be pushing myself in the gym too? Like, should I, you <laughs> yeah. know, like, I should I be running a little extra? Like, is that too much? Is that unhealthy? Like, I just yeah. reading it, I just wasn't sure. It's so funny um, that you bring that up because it's like I've had to really think about like what striving means for me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, because it is I mean clearly from my story like I was striving I was in the gym all the time <laughs> yes uh, um, and for really long periods of time and so like these days what like moving my body well means and like what even a workout means is so different yeah. like I remember one of my friends right after we finished playing I was like oh like yeah what do you do for a workout she's like sometimes I just go for a walk and I was like yeah. ah and like now I'm like no like legit oh, I'll yeah. be, you'll catch me like <laughs> on a sidewalk yeah, somewhere yeah. just walking yeah. Um, yeah. but like that like I think these days I've just decided to it's not so much what I do it's like the intention behind doing mm-hmm. it so I've told myself and this is like so low like it's so crazy to think that I was a college athlete that worked out six times a week like multiple times a day to a person now who's like I'm gonna work out two times a week for 30 minutes like that's like gonna be a set time to work out mm-hmm. but what I do for that workout it just has to be 30 minutes. So whether it's 30 minutes of walking, and this is two times a week, but that's that's nothing. But like right now in the season of life I'm in, that is what makes the most sense for me. That doesn't yeah. that doesn't feel like I'm trying too hard. It doesn't right, like right. it doesn't feel unnatural. I'm just kinda like, if I wanna go for a 30 minute run, if I wanna go for a 30 minute run walk, if I wanna lift weights <laughs> for 30 minutes, like I just need to move my body for 30, I could stretch for 30 minutes. Like, but that just like gives me an easy in. It's mm-hmm. like okay. Am I moving my body? Am I serving my body well? Do I feel good at the end of it? And it, and it becomes less about what I look like and more about mm-hmm. like, okay, am I healthy? Am I mm-hmm. feeling good about myself? Yeah. yeah. Do y'all find that you do like high intensity workouts? I, I know you just said like run walk, but like I gravitate toward like, I would rather hit a circuit 
than run for miles. Well, we've already discussed my hate for that. But like, three I would miles? much rather. Is that your favorite? <laughs> I would much rather just like go to. I mean, I tried a CrossFit once. Uh-huh. That's a no go for me. That's a no go for me too. <laughs> yeah. We're done with that. But like, I, I feel like as a former basketball player, like that's yes. what I gravitate toward. Yeah, my favorite form of workout post basketball is still basketball. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's my favorite. Okay. If yeah. I can go play pickup, that is my dream because I feel like I'm number one, not working out because I love basketball right. and I still love playing, which is a whole nother thing. You know, a lot next of segment. Mm-hmm, yes, <laughs> next segment, but I love playing still. And so if I can play, that's my favorite, but right. I do gravitate, gravitate towards high intensity one. I mean, I also miss really working out with other athletes with other females by myself y'all it is yeah it's it's bad but i started going to like classes and stuff that were doing hit workouts yeah um high intensity workouts and i found that that's like my stride of course Mm -hmm. the pandemic hit so that was not like right (laughs) right but and working out in my house is terrible (laughs) i hate that i love it no i was gonna say like for me exercise nowadays like i wouldn't enjoy it like you said like, it is not like enjoyable. a high yeah. intensity thing, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, absolutely. I'm with someone is. We can go, go to hit, they'll do their. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, I'm like, hit does not feel good. I'm uh, like, why can't I not breathe? This is not comfortable. Yes. <laughs> like, I want to feel like I'm getting a good workout in, but I don't want to feel miserable. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I understand that feeling miserable, you know that you're doing something. Exactly. Right? You're That's working. That's what it is. But yeah. with me, like, I spent way too much time being miserable, miserable. Sure. Yeah. while working out. So, like, to me, I want to enjoy it. Like, a walk, a run. Like, I ran a lot whenever I got back from Ireland. And I was like, I'm going to go on a run and I'm going to walk if I want to. I'm going to stop. <sighs> Liberating. I'm going to. It's amazing. <laughs> like, I'm not. You're not going to time yourself? Watch. I didn't time myself. Right. Didn't look at my pace. Right. Nothing. I just ran and walked to like enjoy it right which was nice it's amazing. but now you said you hate working out in your house <laughs> yeah my peloton is <laughs> well out. i don't have a peloton this is a commercial. Okay. I, I, commercial. Right. I feel like you should be like an advocate for them <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> but like it's literally in my living room i have three dogs so like i can't and they're huge so mm-hmm. i have to be able to monitor them it's so convenient. Like, I can roll out of bed. I can get on my Peloton, like, in my sports bra, in my spandex. No one's looking at me. And I, I can wear no makeup. I can, like, my hair can be greasy and disgusting. Mm-hmm. And the only people judging me are my dogs. Like, <laughs> and I can do it on my own time. Like, I don't, yeah. I find that the hardest part, like, working out is getting, is getting dressed, getting in the car, and going. Mm-hmm. But to me, yeah. like, I just get on the bike and it's so much more enjoyable to me. I agree. Like whether I'm actually getting a quality workout is questionable. <laughs> but I'm sure you're doing it. It's right. I enjoy it. Yeah. 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 I'm right there with you. I think the idea of going somewhere for the workout, the idea of being somewhere, like the accountability of having to go. Yeah. I'm like, we're we're done with that. I think the pandemic taught me that. I was like, I don't like like being so constrained with my time. If I want to go do it. I need to be able to do it right then and there. And maybe, like, maybe that's a character flaw. But I just love the opportunity to be able to, like, okay, I want to move my body now. Let me go downstairs to the treadmill. Mm-hmm. Let me go run. Maybe done with that. And, like, I've wasted no extra time. It just yeah. feels good. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely convenient. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't have a Peloton or a treadmill. Me neither. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. I gotta go. <laughs> Same. Yeah. I, would be, I would be screwed if I didn't have a Peloton. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit the bell notification so that you don't miss a video that we put out. Keep in mind, RCA is a podcast, so you can check us out wherever you stream podcasts. Also, um, follow us on Instagram and on Facebook, and if you really love our content, you can become a patron. You give to us monthly, and we give you exclusive content. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.